Joe is Sonically Disruptive, coming at you as a disembodied voice today. I'm sure as music fans, we all have a long list of artists who we feel have been overlooked and underappreciated for years and years and years. Oftentimes, we are probably wrong if somebody wants to say dangerous toys are way overlooked and underrated. I'm going to say you're wrong. Nothing wrong with the band Dangerous Toys, I suppose. I'm just saying... For me to be in this category, you need to have been on the forefront, perhaps, of something. You need to have brought something different. You need to have been influential. Those type of things are kind of my criteria for inclusion in this. And I'm going to start off the first, the number one, the most overlooked and underappreciated band in the history of history is King's X. Yes, King's X. Some of you, if you're under 30, perhaps, may be like, who the hell is King's X? This is King's X. One reason why I feel this band is largely overlooked and should not be is because of how influential the band was. The band was influential to grunge hugely. Members of Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Pearl Jam have all said how important King's X were to the development of their sound. You can even go into the metal world. Pantera have said many times, Rex and... Dimebag have said that without King's X, Pantera would have never sounded like Pantera sounds. They were hugely influential to many, many musicians. So instead of trying to explain what King's X sounds like, I'm going to play a bunch of King's X for you because their sound is hard to describe because it is like combining the Beatles with Black Sabbath with some Sly and the Family Stone and a ton of other elements coming in there's a large progressive element here there is some bluegrass elements thrown in you name it it is in here metal funk rock whatever you want it's all here and it's all good but to actually hear the music is when it makes sense very brief history of the band would be that they met up in somewhere around 1979 in springfield missouri they were in a few different iterations of the band and a few different band names. And afterwards, um, something brought them out to Houston, Texas. They became King's X and they got a record deal in 1987. And in 1988, the world heard something different, something unique. And right off the bat, you knew that This band was breaking new ground. Here's a little bit from Out of the Silent Planet. For me, what's striking about this is, as a debut record, they already have a signature sound. They already have a uniqueness and a thing that they are doing that other people aren't doing. Now, fast forward only a year later, 1989, and out comes Gretchen goes to Nebraska. Many King's X fans still consider this their best work to date. I'm not in that camp. However, it is a fantastic and just mind-blowing album. It truly is. Even 
now you put it on and you're transported into another world it is so different the melodies the harmonies on this is insane this is one of those albums that truly was studied in college music classes for years after this because of the complexity of the arrangements here is a little taste of Gretchen Goes to Nebraska. Once again, only one year later, 1990 comes Faith, Hope, and Love. This was my personal first exposure to the band. I had graduated high school and the song It's Love was played on MTV frequently. And something about the combination of just that dry, raw, heavy guitar tone with the harmonies, with the... Uh, beautiful nature of it mixed with that heaviness struck me right away and I knew right from that that I had to check this album out. Let's check a little out. The volume of emotion erupting in our souls A quiet revelation quickly takes a hold Patience is a virtue but she won't always wait Dissension is a tension is what we Now a full two years later, the band might be getting lazy. Just kidding. Two years later comes their self-titled album, which was released in 1992. And this record feels darker. It feels a little heavier than the predecessors have felt. And I absolutely devoured this album from start to finish so many times over and over and over again. It's all drop day. It is all so so good. Now let's jump ahead to 1994, Dogman comes out. Dogman, they decided to drop even further. I'm not sure if they're at C or B or what they're doing, but they are lower, dirtier, darker than they've ever sounded. Longtime producer Sam Taylor is now out of the picture 
and they were able to kind of do what they wanted to do more freely. And what you get is a incredibly powerful record. Sounds amazing and every song here is jaw dropping. Take a listen. There can be but better ways from yesterday's to me. Somewhere there are better days for better ways to be. Sunny days have funny ways of quieting the roar. Six comes around and the band is now on a major label. The band have said that this is the record where they began to feel a lot of pressure to write hits and to produce and to sell albums. Not a great time for the band. Many people still love this album. This is Ear Candy. From 1998, the band had been dropped from their major label because they did not sell, they did not produce hits, and out comes Tapehead. It is a really great record. Dark, moody, I think this record is a great statement of what King's X can do. Let's take a listen once again. and sees the release of Please Come Home Mr. Bulbous with such a catchy name as that how could this not be a huge success it wasn't this was a time where the band was a little at odds the band was thinking about possibly ending and they kind of came together and said you know fuck it let's make the weirdest most experimental album that we can do Nobody's going to buy it anyway, so who cares? And I think this album is a masterpiece. I love this album. Many people don't get it, but I was floored when I heard this. They went out of their way to create these really abnormal chord structures and chord progressions that you would never expect. You can listen to this right now, this many years later, and still find new things the harmonies on here are so daring. They're so different. The melodies here are the same. This album is great from start to finish. Just a really almost genius record from my own personal opinion. Here's why.
It's one year, 2001, and they put out Manic Moonlight. This was a continuation of the experimentation that they had began with, although in a different way. This has a funkier vibe and a different vibe, and they use some other kind of flavors to put in the songs. For me, I did not like this one nearly as much as the previous record, although there are some really good highlights on here and definitely some music that I enjoy very much. three comes along and black like sunday comes out this is an interesting record because the band goes back and records very old songs that they had written with previous bands even before they were even king's x and you get some really cool songs some really cool ideas some do feel dated some feel very of the time in the early 80s and of that nature but it's really cool music there are a few songs from later periods that I absolutely love, like two. And um, yeah, a really interesting experiment. Don't know where to look anymore, can't find you. Don't know where to look anymore, where are you? Up to 2005, Org Tones comes out, and this was kind of a rebirth for the band in a little bit. They got a new record label, they got a little bit more press behind them, and the record label did a fairly good job kind of pushing it out. They had a few uh, videos on this one, and um, it's a strong record. It is not exactly a return to form because they never do that they don't make the same record twice for a band this far into their career there are some really great songs on here and here's what this sounds like <laughs> Momentum's all about you. This confusion is clearer than most. My freedom has been challenged. Chains, freedom buried within. Walls of this kingdom always been thin. Stubborn, fragile, full of contempt. Addicted to this prison. I don't know what it is about me that magnifies my self conscience. Operation on the pain. Take it higher, or later. So 2008 comes around and we get the release of 15. This record has a little bit different sound. It does feel like each song is kind of a solo song by the artist who does it. It there's, doesn't sound like there's a lot of collaboration in the band at this point. And in that point, it may be a little disappointed. But there are some really killer songs on here. Like every King's X record, it still sounds like King's X and it is still high quality music. Let's check that out now. Most days she can't wait to see if the sun will come out. Sorry, Julie. Sorry that I couldn't quite read. Different. 
that was the last album that the band has put out. That was 2008. That is a long damn time ago. This year, 2021, we are expecting a new record. The record has been done for a long time. It was supposed to be being mastered, and that's all we were waiting on. I think there may be a problem with the record label. There's some kind of things that are kind of not explained going on here. I hope so badly that this album comes out soon. I cannot wait to hear it. What can we expect from King's X in the future? What can we expect from this album? Here are just a few little teeny snippets, very rough, that the band released on Twitter. Have a listen. So if you're not convinced by now that King's X are a great band and so overlooked, I don't know how to help you. They have a completely original sound. They are fantastic musicians, and it's so great. It's always been just the three. It's been Doug Pinnock, Ty Tabor, and Jerry Gaskill the whole way through, no change in the lineups. And all three are fantastic musicians, they all three have fantastic voices, and when these three voices come together, there's nothing else that sounds like that. A innovative and influential band that have been going for years and years and years. They are the most overlooked and underrated band in the history of history. That is my opinion. And I'd go so far as to say that is fact. There you are. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.